begin the class session. Uh, first of all, subscribe to our channel. Uh, what I want to say to the YouTube audience is to please subscribe and click or uh, whatever it is that you do on the like. Thumbs up so that we can get uh, more uh, exposure, hopefully. Subscribe to the John Ray channel. <laughs> to click on thumbs up, I like. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, <laughs> Thank you. Uh, today, you might notice that I didn't bring my, my um, a chart of the books of the Bible. And the reason is that today's lesson is in the book of Genesis, which is the first book in the Bible. I figure you can find that pretty easy and uh, not need any guidance or help. Uh, and, and we're going to jump around. And I, uh, as those of you who have been with me for a while, no, I don't like these kind of lessons where we jump around and skip stuff because there's some important stuff in the chapters that we skip. But um, we'll deal with that as best we can. And we're going to start today in chapter 12 of the book of Genesis the the unit title is called Early Israelite History. Well, let me tell you that uh, 2,000 years has already passed since God created Adam and Eve uh, and Cain and Abel and, you know, I could go on and on. But 2,000 years have passed already. The flood has already happened, and we miss it, at least in this study. You know, we'll catch it some other time. But they move around, the people who write our literature move around um, to try to keep it from being boring, I guess. I don't know why they they do that. But... Uh, the, the, the title of the lesson today is God's Covenant with Abraham. And let me tell you that God's, my, my opinion, it's my opinion, when I read it, the way it comes through to me, God's covenant with Abraham is not what Abraham understood. He thought it was still okay to lie, for instance. He thought it was still okay to do other things that today, I mean, he, he thought it was okay to go skating and bowling and things like that. Nah. Now, he doesn't say that in Scripture, <laughs> but, well, it's human nature. And so it's a difficult thing for us to make a contract, if you will, a covenant with a holy being that we can't even see. We don't know him uh, like he knows us. He knows us because he made us. Um, our lesson is going to start in chapter 12, uh, but I want to read a little bit in chapter 11, if that's okay. Um, and, and what I want to do is show you that you have to be careful when you're looking 
when you're studying in the scripture and you're looking at, at names, for instance, uh, let's start with verse number 21 in chapter 11. I'm not going to read the, all the way to the end, but it says in uh, Rehu lived after he begat Sebring. He lived 207 more years and he begat a whole bunch of sons and daughters. And Serig, his son, lived 30 years and begat Nair. Now, I want you to notice that he begat Nair because a little later that's important. And verse 23 says, Serig lived after he begat Nair 200 years and he begat a whole bunch of sons and daughters. And Nair lived nine and twenty years and begat Terah. Well, Terah was Abraham's daddy. Then it says, And Nair lived after he begat Terah 119 years, and he begat a whole bunch of sons and daughters. And then Terah lived 70 years and begat Abram, Nair, <laughs> see, he named, Abram named one of his sons after this ancestor. So when you see the name Nair in the scripture, you have to um, be sure that you know which Nair is being talked about. Now, I'm just using this as an example because it comes up and it is a good time in today's uh, study. Uh, but there are other places in the scripture where similar things happen. Are you trying to be an air sayer? Yeah, I'm an air sayer. Uh, and then it says, verse 27, now these are the generations of Terah. Terah begat Abram, Nair, and Haran. And Haran begot, begot Lot. Now, you've heard about Lot a lot, I think. And we've talked about Lot a lot. Talked about him living in Sodom or Gomorrah, one or the other, or both. Uh, but today, if you, if you notice on the map, um, this, uh, the land of Abraham started over here in Ur and it came to a black dot right there called Haran. So I, I don't know whether this town was named after one of these guys or not, but if you read this closely, there's more than one Haran in here too. So uh, it was a custom back then to name uh, offspring after ancestors. Uh, uh, for instance, I was named after my daddy. Uh, I, I'm John H. Ray Jr. And he was John H. Ray. Uh, now I have three children three uh, of their spouses, <laughs> and they've had 11 grandchildren, and I can't get any of them to name their kid John. <laughs> uh, and and every, every, every time I say, when, when we learn one's coming, uh, I'll tell them that, that its name is Johnny Ray. Uh, I, I even have a cousin, a girl cousin, who is named Johnny Ray. And uh, my daddy's nephew thought so much of his Uncle John that he named his baby girl Johnny Ray. And then the last name, of course, uh, went with it, and that was Gore. So she was Johnny Ray Gore. Anyway, 
I, I haven't been able to accomplish that. I don't know what I'm doing wrong, but obviously something I'm not that good of a granddad, I guess. I, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know for sure. Probably. Yeah, it could be that. See, <laughs> see, uh, my wife, uh, we have a little granddaughter that's got Dorothy in her name. Mm -hmm. And she never even tried. My wife didn't. My wife didn't make any effort at all to get that to happen. But anyway, back in these days, which is roughly six, uh, 4,000 years back from where we are today, this was um, the custom and, and, and just it has happened this way. But if you'll notice, I'll read one more verse, verse 28. It says, Haran died before his father Tira. Well, that's not right. We don't like that custom. We don't like it where a daddy has to bury a son. Not at all. But, no, uh, listen, I feel for you. I feel your pain. And, and Haran died before his father Tira in the land of his nativity in Ur of the Chaldees. Okay, so this is Ur. And the Chaldees have been uh famous enemies of 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 God's people and God's will forever and ever now let's start with verse 1 of chapter 12 it says now the lord had said unto abram notice the word had now the lord had said unto abram Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto a land that I will show thee. Get thee out of thy country. Where was his country? Now, I've skipped some of the reading, and this is this is what I dislike about jumping around. But uh, when Abram Abram left Ur, his daddy went with him up that red line up here to Haran, and that's where they stopped. Uh, the, the daddy and a good bit of the family stopped there. So Abram didn't just go away from his daddy, took his daddy with him. Verse 2 says, And I will make thee a great nation if you will leave your father's house and go unto a land that I will show thee. I will make of thee a great nation and I will bless thee, and I will make thy name great. I think virtually everybody knows who Abraham is. And uh, uh, while it may not be appropriate uh, to say, I'm going to say it anyway, that in the Islam or Muslim community, everybody knows who Mohammed is. And most of them have Mohammed in their name. It's their first name or their middle name or maybe even their last name. And in some cases, it's both their first name and their last name. Anyway, uh, Abraham has become famous, not Abram. Verse 3, God's still talking to Abram, and he says, And I will bless them that bless thee, and I will curse him that curseth thee, and in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. Wow. So Abram departed as the Lord had spoken unto him. But he said... <laughs> You get away from your father's house. Well, um, Lot went with him. That's that's not quite what God seemed to have intended. I, I, at least I can't I, I can't find it anywhere 
that the Lord intended for that to be part of the deal. But it says in the middle of verse 4, starting there, that Abram was 70 and 5 years old when he departed out of Haran. So I don't know how old he was when he was down here in Ur when God first spoke to him. Uh, so we, we, don't, we don't know how long this journey took, but Tiran, his daddy, Tira, his daddy, died in Haran. Uh, after his daddy died, then he left and came down this red highway, okay, down through Damascus and the Jordan River Valley over here in Canaan. We'll read more about that as time goes on. Verse 4 again, So Abram departed uh, as the Lord had spoken unto him, and Lot went with him. And Abram was seventy and five years old when he departed out of Haran. Let me tell you, I'm, uh, when I was seventy-five years old, I didn't want to make a trip like that. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't know how... Uh, how uh, an old guy like that made it. But back in those days, maybe uh, age was just a number and it didn't uh, wear on their youth or their body the way things do on ours. Verse 5 says, And Abram took Sarah, his wife, and he took Lot, his brother's son, and he took all their substance that they had gathered, and he took all the souls that they had gotten in Haran. That means apparently they had uh, accumulated a household of servants. And they went forth to go into the land of Canaan. And into the land of Canaan they came. So the land of Canaan, here you see Canaan uh, spelled upwards that way. And so they came down this way in on that red highway. Uh, verse 6 starts a new paragraph. says, Abram passed through the land under the place of Sycam, under the plain of Mori. And the Canaanites were then in the land. I mean, that's where the Canaanites lived, and that was their home. And they weren't really happy to see this new band come from the land of Ur, or the city of Haran. Verse 7 says, And the Lord appeared unto Abram. This is a nice part. When the Lord appears... That's a good thing. And he said, Abram, unto thy seed will I give this land. I bet the Canaanites weren't real happy about that. If you'll let me bet you. And there, there he built an altar unto the Lord who appeared unto him. And he removed from thence unto a mountain on the east of Bethel and pitched his tent. Oh, I have this other map over here that shows Bethel is right there, that black dot. That's roughly 20 miles north of, of Jerusalem, which is right there. So to give you some frame of reference, we're talking Bethel, roughly 20 miles, uh, and it's in the mountains, just like Jerusalem's in the mountains. And he, the, other, the other name that's mentioned in the Bible is not on um, this map, but uh, when, when we go uh, east from Bethel, we're going up to a high place. See, that was their, uh, everybody's custom was get to the highest place you can get to build an altar to praise your God. Get as close to God as you can. And verse 8, again, in the middle of it. 
And there he built an altar unto the Lord, and he called upon the name of the Lord. And Abram journeyed, going on still toward the south. So uh, even from where he was here in Bethel, he kept on coming down. Now, the Bethel's not on this map, but here you see the Sea of Galilee and you see the Dead Sea. And uh, Bethel is closer to the Dead Sea, so he was right along in there somewhere on this map. And it says that he continued on south. Verse 10. A new paragraph. There was a famine in the land. Food wasn't growing. So Abram went down into Egypt to sojourn there. For the famine was grievous in the land, meaning, oh boy, they were about to starve to death. So he went on over to Egypt. Now that's why this red line goes all the way over here. Uh, but but he got rejected, and so the red line goes back to the land that God brought him to, or took him to. There was a famine in the land, verse 10. Abram went down into Egypt to sojourn there, for the famine was grievous in the land. And it came to pass when he was come near to enter into Egypt that he said unto Sarah, his wife, Behold, now look here now, Sarah. I know, and everybody else knows, because they see when they look on you. Now, I don't know how much of her face she had covered like this kind of thing, and just, just her eyes showing on her. I don't, I don't know, but uh, how they were dressing uh, exactly in that day. But he says, I know that thou art a fair woman to look upon. Verse 12, therefore, because you are a fair woman, it shall come to pass that when the Egyptian men shall see thee, that they shall say, this is his wife, and they will kill me. And I'm going to add a few words here. They will kill me to make you a widow and make you available to them. He didn't, it's not in the scripture that way, you know, I can see you scholars looking for that, and it's not there. And it came to pass that when Abram was coming to Egypt, the Egyptians beheld the woman, that she was very attractive, fair, good looking. Smoking hot is the word, John. You're looking for it. Say that again. Smoking hot is the word you're looking oh, for. Smoking hot? Yeah. Okay. I don't think they had that in uh, in the language that this was written, written, written in. King so James would not approve of that? No, King James probably <laughs> didn't approve of that. I don't, I don't know. But it says in verse 15 that the princes, also Pharaoh, that means his sons, saw her and commended her before Pharaoh. And the woman was taken into Pharaoh's house, and he entreated Abram well for her sake, his sister. And he had sheep and oxen, and he asses and men servants and maid servants and she asses and camels. And the Lord plagued Pharaoh and his house with great plagues because of Sarah, his, Abram's wife. And Pharaoh figured that out. Verse 18 says that he called Abram and said, What is this that thou hast done unto me? 
Why didst thou not tell me that she was your wife? Why saidst thou she is my sister? Huh? So, look, you put me in a position that I might have taken her to me, to wife. Now, because of what you've done, looky here, here's your wife. I'm giving her back to you. Take her and go thy way. Okay, well, that's why this red circle, or red line circles back. He, he, he couldn't stay in Egypt. Verse 20 says, And Pharaoh commanded his men concerning him, and they sent him away and his wife and all that he had. And so he looped around on a red circle. Uh, now we, uh, boy, I wish we could talk about some of the things in verses, in chapters 13 and 14. But that's not in our lesson. So we go to chapter 15. If you will turn there with me. Uh, I, I, I may even skip uh, chapter 17 and 21 because I want to talk about chapter 22 more than anything in this covenant uh, with Abraham. But Chapter 15 starts with verse 1. It says, After these things, the word of the Lord came unto Abram. See, it says, After these things. Well, it's, talk, it's talking about the things that happened in, in chapters 13 and 14, and we don't, we don't get to read those. So yeah, that's homework. You have to read those on your own. After these things, the word of the Lord came unto Abram in a vision, saying, don't be afraid, Abram. I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. Now, I don't mean to be putting myself in Abram's category, not at all. Uh, but I, I, in my professional life, I lost a couple of jobs because I wouldn't do the wrong things that they were asking me to do. Just wouldn't do them. So uh, and I lost my jobs. Um, it was harder on my family. It was harder on me uh, trying to provide for my family when I got little bitty kids and uh, all these things. But I had been in the Bible long enough to know that he was my protector. He was my shield. And that's what he's saying to Abram here and and he will still do that today for you, for any that will have faith that Jesus is the Son of the Almighty God. I didn't say that here in the Old Testament, but we get that in the New Testament. Okay. Anyway, we're studying the Bible, and today we're studying in the book of Genesis, and we're in chapter 15 at verse 2. And it says, And Abram said to God, What wilt thou give me, seeing I go childless? And the steward of my house is this Eliezer, of Damascus. Now, Eliezer, here's Damascus. So, Abram, either he, either he went to the city of Haran looking for a job and was among those that made the travels, or when they come through Damascus, Abram picked him up somewhere. He may, might have been standing on the, in front of the 7-Eleven there looking, waiting for a job. I don't know. But Abram continued to talk in verse 3, and he said, Looky here, God, behold, 
to me thou hast given no seed. And lo, one born in my house is mine heir. He's saying, I'm the master of the house, and all the little kids that are born of my servants um, are mine, and one of them shall be mine heir. Middle of verse 4, it says, But he that shall come forth out of thine own bowels shall be thine heir. See, let's go back now and read verse 4. At the beginning it says, And behold, the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, No, no, not, none of those little kids from your servants are going to be your heir, but it'll be one that come forth out of thine own bowels shall be thine heir. Well, remember that he was 75 up here. Verse 5, and he brought him forth abroad, and he said, now this is God bringing Abram over to the side a little bit on a high place, and says, look now toward heaven and count the stars. Now it says in the scripture, it says, tell the stars. But if you read the next verse, you'll see that that really means count the stars. Or I don't mean the next verse, I mean the next phrase. Uh, that means count the stars if thou be able to number them. And God said unto Abram, so shall thy seed be. So if you've ever been in a really dark place, in the country somewhere where there's no city lights and a clear sky and you look up, there are stars everywhere. Verse 6 says, And Abram believed that. Well, that's not exactly what it says. It says that he believed in the Lord. And the Lord counted it to Abram for righteousness. And God said, verse 7, I am the Lord that brought thee out of Ur of the Chaldees to give thee this land to inherit it. And he said, this is Abram talking now, uh, in the conversation, starting with verse 8, Abram said, Lord God, whereby shall I know that I shall inherit it? I mean, there, I mean, there, there are people living here. How am I going to get this land? Verse 9 said, And he said unto me, or unto him, Take me an heifer of three years old, and a she-goat of three years old, and a ram of three years old, and a turtle dove, and a young pigeon. Well, he took unto him all these, and he divided them in the midst, and he laid each piece one against another. But he didn't cut the birds in two. But the birds divided he not. Verse 11, and when the fowls came down upon the carcasses that he had um, cut up, Abram drove those fowls away. And when the sun was going down, a deep sleep fell upon Abram. And lo, and horror of great darkness fell upon him. And God said unto Abram, Know of a surety, Abram, that thy seed shall be a stranger in this land that is not theirs, and shall serve them. Now the land he's talking about now is Egypt. 
they shall afflict them 400 years. And also that nation, Egypt, whom they shall serve, will I judge. And afterwards shall they come out with great substance. And when they come out with great substance, they're going to come to this land and occupy it. Verse 15 says, And thou shalt go to thy fathers in peace. Thou shalt be buried in a good old age. So he's saying, Abram, you not going to be here when all of this happens. Verse 16, But in the fourth generation they shall come hither again, for the iniquity of the Amorites is not yet full. Now, um, the Amorites, as I understand it, occupied this kind of this territory right in here at the time that this was all happening. So it was it was right in there that the Amorites were, even though it's not uh, on that map. That's best I can do to locate it for you. Uh, but in the fourth generation, verse 16, they shall come hither again, for the iniquity of the Amorites is not yet full. And it came to pass that when the sun went down and it was dark, behold, look at here, a smoking furnace and a burning lamp that passed between those pieces. Now, those pieces he's talking about are the pieces of the, uh, if you go back to uh, verse number 9, he says, take me and heifer of three years old and a, a she-goat of three years old and a ram of three years old. Well, he cut them up. Verse 10 says that he took unto him all these and he divided them in the midst. That means he cut them in two or maybe more pieces than that. And he laid them out on, on, on this altar that uh, had been prepared. Um, and somehow, verse 17, that when it was dark, the sun went down, there was a smoking furnace there, and a burning lamp passed between those pieces. Now, I don't know what that burning lamp was other than it being God or some angel that he sent to do this, but he walked. It was part of the ceremony. And in the same day, verse 18, the Lord made a covenant with Abram, saying unto thy, saying, unto thy seed have I given this land. I'm not really giving it to you. I'm giving it to your seed. And I'm giving it to you from the river of Egypt and the great river, the river Euphrates. Well, let me tell you, the river of Egypt is over here. And the Euphrates is not even on this map. But, but this is basically, that red line is basically. See, when people traveled back in those days, they traveled on the, at the riverside because water was was a needed necessity. Water was life. So um, uh, he, he actually promised them all, all of this land. Now, in today's time, the land of Israel just goes from from right here to to right there, uh, and and a little bit on the other side of of the Jordan River but not much. And what's in conflict with the uh, uh, Arabs over there is the West Bank, which is this area, and the Gaza Strip, which is right down there. And basically the Gaza Strip is the remnant uh, of the Philistines. This says Philistia right up that 
way. Uh, but the F uh, Philistines, uh, commonly called the Philistines, and I don't know why, but they were Philistines, and uh, they were a common enemy uh, fighting over the land. Well, they've now been reduced and basically squeezed down to in the Gaza Strip. And every day they're, they're lobbing uh, mortars over into Israel. And they're not very high tech with them. They, they, just, they just shoot them off, hoping it'll hit something and cause some damage. And, you know, I don't know what their thinking is. Verse 18, And the same day the Lord made a covenant with Abram, saying, Unto thy seed have I given this land from the river of Egypt unto the great river, the river Euphrates. The Kenites and the Kenizzites and the Cadmonites and the Hittites and the Perizzites and the Rephaims and the Amorites and the Canaanites and the Gergesites and the Jebusites. So all of those different kinds of, of uh, uh, of countries, of people were occupying this land that, that God said he was going to give to his people. Well, that's, again, that's, that's what the fuss is all about over there now. Those, those, those people are saying, that was our land. We were here first. And they're right. They were. But uh, God is greater than they are. Uh, turn with me, if you will, to um, chapter 22, because I want to get to chapter 22 um, rather than, than spend our time in chapter 17 and 21. Because I think you all know, every one of you that's in here have been around long enough to know that Isaac was born unto uh, Abraham and Sarah, okay? And then there came a time that God tempted Abraham to see whether or not he would keep the covenant. And the reason he did was Abraham had already lied a couple of times about his wife being his sister, we only read one of the times, but there's another time when that uh, same thing happened. Abraham was not um, pure white, uh, snow white. Let's read chapter 22. And it came to pass after these things, that means the things that occurred in the chapters I skipped, that God did tempt Abraham, and he said unto him, Abraham? And Abraham said, Behold, here I am. And God said, Take now thy son, your only son, Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah. Well, let me tell you, the land of Moriah is what now is known as Jerusalem. Okay? But there was a mountain named Mount Moriah. Today, it's known as the Temple Mount. Towards the end of verse 2. And offer him there, offer Isaac there in the land of Moriah for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains which I will tell thee of. I will, I'll show you which mountain. Verse 3. So Abraham rose up early in the morning and he saddled his ass and he took two of his young men with him and he took Isaac his son and they clave the wood for the burnt offering and they rose up and went unto the place which God had told him. Then on the third day Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place afar off. 
So Abraham said unto his young men, the two guys that was with him, Abide ye here with the animals, and I and the lad will go yonder and worship and come again to you. So Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and he laid it upon Isaac his son. So he made Isaac carry the wood with the firewood. Middle, middle of verse 6, he took the fire, that was a torch that he had in his hand, and a knife. And the two of them went both together. And Isaac spake unto Abraham his father. And he said, My father? And Abraham responded, Here am I my beloved son, Isaac. And Isaac said, look, look, look here. I, I see the torch and I see uh, obviously the wood because I've got it on my back. But where is the lamb for a burnt offering? And Abraham said, my son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. So they went, both of them together, and they came to the place which God had told Abraham of. And Abraham built an altar there, and he laid the wood in order. And then he, he, he tied up Isaac. Probably duct tape or something. He, he taped him all up. I, I don't know. I don't know how it is Isaac went along with this, but he did. It says that he bound Isaac, his son, and he laid him upon the altar, or on the altar, upon the wood. And Abraham stretched forth his hand and took the knife to slay his son, so he was ready to slit his throat had his arm already up. And then verse 11 says, The angel of the Lord called unto him out of heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And Abraham said, Here am I. And the angel said, Lay not thine hand upon the lad, neither do thou anything unto him. And now, folks, I want you to notice. He says, now I know that you fear God. God did not know whether he could trust Abraham or not until he put him to the test. And it's because Abraham had a choice. Some and people so he, say that, that not necessarily God didn't know, but God just says it this way to make it. It's, yeah, listen, I'm, Tom, I'm just reading God's word. I know, and and he says, now I know. But God also said things like in, in the garden, he said, uh, where are you, Adam and Eve? Don't you think he knew where they were? And oh, he knew there's a lot of things that he knew they were in the garden. He knew they were in the garden. He knew that they had sinned but, but, and all that. But I'm just saying, sometimes God says these things to make it understandable for us through the story, but it doesn't necessarily mean God didn't know. So that's but, all I'm saying. Okay. Um, I learned to read and I learned to comprehend some structure and all of that sort of thing. And that's what this guy is saying. He's saying, now I know. Now that you've got your arm raised up and ready to slit his throat, now I know that you fear God. And seeing thou hast not withheld thy son, that's how I know that you've, you, you were going to kill your son. Thine only son. 
from me. And Abraham lifted up his eyes, and he looked and beheld behind him a ram caught in a thicket by his horns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered him up for a burnt offering in the stead of his son. So instead of his son being burned, the ram was burned. Now look at verse 14 very closely. Abraham called the name of that place where they were. Jehovah Jireh. Now, customarily, we are taught that that's one of Jehovah's names. Jehovah Jireh. Well, the scripture doesn't say that. This is the only place that the word Jireh, which is added to Jehovah, is in the scripture. It's the only place. And, and, and it says, Abraham called the name of that place Jehovah Jireh. And they still call it that. If you read, I, I'll read it the way it says, but um, I'll paraphrase it later, I guess. As it is said to this day, okay, this day Moses was writing this, after the children of Israel had spent their 400 years over here and then they would went off into the wilderness and wandered around. So uh, sometime, and I don't know exactly the time before the 400 years, but we read that part that, that his people was going to be uh, serving uh, another country for 400 years. And, uh, and then after that, Abraham died, and then they got, they went off to Egypt and were there for four. Y'all know all of this, these stories Moses in general. Moses must have heard this, but, this story from someone. Huh? M Moses must have heard this whole story from someone. From it, God. It had to be passed down to him or something. From God. Or unless God gave it to him, that would be the other way. This is God's word. This is God's word. Uh, maybe it's King James's word. No, but I'm just saying that, that somehow he got this. I mean, he somehow he was told that they were going to stay in the land 400 years, because that was before his day. Yeah. All of this. So, like you said, he either received the whole, you know, Pentateuch or the first five books of the Bible from God, or. His but ancestors it, told him these stories. But at the time that he was writing this, which was some, I'm going to say 500 years after uh, God talked about it, uh, he had the chance to offer his son, and he got provided with a ram instead. And he called that place Jehovah Jireh. Abraham did. But... 500 years had passed, roughly, and Moses still knew that that place is still called Jehovah Jireh. And the place is, not, not, not God. God's not called Jehovah Jireh. As it is said to this day, in the mount of the Lord it shall be seen. Verse 15 says, And the angel of the Lord called unto Abraham out of heaven the second time. And he said, By myself have I sworn, saith the Lord, for because thou hast done this thing and hast not withheld thine son, or thy son, thine only son, that in blessing I will bless thee, and in multiplying I will multiply thy seed as the stars of the heaven, and we've already read about that, and as the sand which is upon the seashore, and thy seed shall possess the gate 
of his enemies and all the rest of his land for that matter. Verse 18, and in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed because thou hast obeyed my voice. Abraham returned unto his young men, the two that he had left at the bottom of the mountain with the animals, and they rose up and went together to Beersheba. And Abraham dwelt at Beersheba. That's further south than where the uh, sacrifice was performed. Verse 20, And it came to pass after these things that it was told Abraham, saying, Behold, Milcah. Now, uh, I didn't read to you about Milcah, but that's, she was, uh, that's a girl's name, a woman's name, and she was in the parts that we skipped. She hath also borne children unto thy brother Nair. <laughs> Uh, uh, so there's an air again. I'm an air, sir. Number 21. Huz was his firstborn, and Buzz, his brother, and Camuel, the father of Aram, and Chesed, or Chesed, and Hazel, and Pildish, and Jidlef and Rebecca, or uh, I'm sorry, I skipped a line, and Bethuel, and Bethuel begat Rebecca. These eight Milcah did bear to Nair, Abraham's brother, and his concubine, whose name was Ruma, she bare also Teba, and Gaim, and Thash and Maaka, and that's the end of chapter 22. And um, we need to get used to stopping at, uh, at 9.55, because uh, you know, starting next week, that, that becomes official. And so time is up. Uh, are there any comments or questions or complaints or um, criticism or anything anybody has to say? Bye, Mike. <laughs> then let's pray. Lord, we thank you for your goodness to us and your mercy to us and your blessings on us. We thank you for this place that we can come. I say all the time, that we can come with our friends and read your word and talk about it. And we thank you for this. We are blessed. We've come here not only to learn of you, but also to praise you, to worship you. We're going to do that in the name of Jesus of Nazareth, who indeed is our God, our Savior. Amen. God bless you all for being in his house.